In this video, I want to focus specifically on hyperbolic functions and go over the definition of hyperbolic and inverse hyperbolic functions. Uh, after that, I, I really think it's important that we talk about at least, you know, at the uh, very briefly about the relationship between trigonometric and hyperbolic functions. Um, so let me go ahead and start off with some similarities and differences between trigonometric and hyperbolic functions. Number one, uh, they do share very similar relationships. Um, specifically, I'm going to talk about things like uh, sine and cosine. If I divide, I get tangent. The same kind of thing works with hyperbolic functions. If I take hyperbolic sine divided by hyperbolic cosine, I get hyperbolic tangent. Um, so they are very similar in that relationship. Um, I will also make sure I mention that they both are related to geometry. And we can say that, you know, they have to do with triangles and a conic section. Uh, in the case of trigonometric functions more specifically though we talk a lot about the unit circle and so that's actually what those trigonometric functions are based off of they're based off of the circle however with hyperbolic functions instead of using a circle we're going to use the unit hyperbola so it's a hyperbola with um, the major axis is one um, the other couple of things that I'm going to mention to you is they are related in parity so uh, Another word for that would be symmetry. For example, if you think about the even versus odd, um, the only even functions were cosine and secant. Uh, well, the same thing happens to be true with the hyperbolic functions is the only two even ones are the hyperbolic cosine and hyperbolic secant, um, and the odd ones are everything else. Uh, the last thing I want to mention to you is um, just kind of what, what they do. Um, they both deal with, uh, when I graph them, the cosine of whatever angle I put in is going to give me uh, the x value and sine is going to give me the y value. Okay, And the same thing happens with the hyperbolic functions is the x value is the hyperbolic cosine, the y value is hyperbolic sine. They're just going to represent a hyperbola instead of a circle. Um, the other big differences that we're going to talk about are um, they have some small differences in formulas. Um, like, for instance, I'm going to talk specifically about Pythagorean versus hyperbolic identities. Uh, the other thing I want to mention is that with trig functions, what those trig functions do is they take in their input is an angle measure and they spit out uh, side ratios. However, that is not the case uh, with hyperbolic functions. With hyperbolic functions, uh, they take in angle measures, but they spit out what's something that's more like uh, mu much more related to area than anything else, um, at least within uh, the Euclidean space. If we talk about you know other types of geometry, it's a little bit different, but um, that's neither here nor there at this moment. Um, so I want to go ahead and get get kind of into this idea of the Pythagorean versus hyperbolic identity. So notice I've kind of talked about just the similarities and differences and so far, and I really want to focus in on this whole formula difference. So there's three Pythagorean identities which are related on the fact uh, it's, you know, a squared plus b squared equals c squared is the Pythagorean theorem. You could also think about it as uh, x squared plus y squared equals 1, which is my unit circle. Uh, that's the equation of it is x squared plus y squared equals 1. Um, so the big difference here is how these Pythagorean idea, uh, identities turn into. So these, are, again, are what I'm starting with. My Pythagorean identities are, here's the three. Uh, the first one is cosine squared, and I'll use theta, plus sine squared theta equals 1. Now, you could switch these. It's not going to be particularly important which one goes first, uh, whether it's sine squared or cosine squared. Uh, it will be when I talk about the hyperbolic identities, so be warned there. Um, the next one would be um, 1 plus tangent squared theta equals uh, secant squared theta. Uh, here's the trick. If you ever get stuck and forget these, what I do is I just divide this by cosine. Uh, cosine divided by cosine gives me 1. Sine divided by cosine gives me tangent. 1 divided by cosine gives me secant. And you can do the other one for the last one. So cosine divided by sine gives me cotangent squared. Sine divided by sine gives me 1, and 1 divided by sine gives me cosecant squared. So there's all three of our Pythagorean identities. Make sure you pay attention to these. They are important. 
Um, I'll put a star next to them. Um, however, the hyperbolic identities are a little bit different because we don't really have the Pythagorean theorem anymore with hyperbolic functions, but we do have the equation of the unit hyperbola, which the only difference is instead of it being x squared plus y squared, it's going to be x squared minus y squared equals 1. Uh, and that is, again, the equation of the unit, unit hyperbola. So from here, I'm just going to kind of do the analogous thing. Uh, X was cosine, so I'm going to write hyperbolic cosine squared, and I'll still put a theta, um, minus uh, hyperbolic sine squared theta equals 1. And we're just going to follow the same kind of process. If I, you know, if I ever forget these, it's kind of easy to remember. Just divide everything by cosine, we get 1 minus sine over cosine gives me tangent and 1 divided by cosine gives me secant. So notice the big difference here is the sine changes. Um, now this does order does matter. So cosine has to go first versus sine. 1 minus tangent. Um, and the other one is going to be uh, the hyperbolic cotangent minus 1 equals hyperbolic cosecant squared. I will also mention to you while I'm sitting here thinking about it, uh, this is hyperbolic sine. It's pronounced cinch, S-I-N-C-H. This is pronounced the way it's spelled. Kosh, it's hyperbolic cosine. Uh, tanch, T-A-N-C-H is how it's pronounced. Uh, then you've got seeksh, and I always call this coseeksh and cotanch. Some people call it cough. Um, that's really kind of up to you, but I just want to make sure I mention that those what are what those functions are. Uh, again, these are important. Memorize them. They're worth it. Um, I do also want to go ahead and mention to you the definitions. I'm not going to go through and prove all of these things right now. Um, if you want me to prove them, let me know, and I will happily go through and especially prove these inverse functions. Um, but I'm not going to do that right this second, um, just for time. So what I want to mention to you is with the hyperbolic functions, um, it is sine or cinch is e to the x minus e to the negative x over 2. Make sure you memorize that one. Um, the other one is cosh. The hyperbolic cosine is e to the x plus e to the negative x over 2. Again, tanch, seek, uh, coseek, and cotanth, uh, they're all related the same way all of these others are. Uh, so maybe don't memorize them. Maybe instead focus on cinch and kosh and go from there. Um, because notice all I did was I took the numerator from cinch and the numerator from kosh, put them together, got tanch. Um, same kind of idea here is for seek, I just flipped over, I made the reciprocal of cosh. Um, so I'm just kind of uh, uh, giving you a hints on here. Uh, for cosecs, it's the reciprocal of cinch. And again, all I do is take the numerator of cosh divided by the numerator of cinch, and I've got cotanch. Um, now, with the inverse functions, I would highly, again, memorize these two. I would probably try to add in that last one while I'm at it. Um, so these are a little bit more difficult. There is a way to prove them so you don't have to memorize them, but I don't really want to get into that in this video. If you want me to go over it, please ask me. Um, I will either make another video with, for you guys or I can go over it in class with you guys. It's totally up to you guys. Um, the thing about these down here, just remember again, they're reciprocals. So just flip whatever you're plugging in. Um, so other than that, hopefully this does help you guys at least better understand what to look for, what to what to know about the hyperbolic functions. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me at any point. Have a good day.